Space Invaders Invasion Day is a remake of the 1978 arcade classic, developed by Taito and published in the US as Space Raiders. Taito handled the release in Japan, but localization seems to have been handled by Mastiff, a smaller publisher responsible for the US release of other Japanese titles like Lapusel Tactics and Gurumin A Monstrous Adventure. I guess it's actually more of a prequel than a remake, as the game revolves around the, you know, Invasion Day, the first attack on Earth at the hands of the Space Invaders, and while humanity's line of defense would eventually extend to its outer atmosphere, right now is the time of random people with guns. Three of them, in fact, though four guns, since Ashley uses two. Space Raiders takes the arcade action of Space Invaders to the streets, quite literally. This is... Yeah, this is just Space Invaders. This game is a fixed vertical shooter like the original, though there are a few notable changes from Space Invaders that set it apart. Whether or not those changes are good or not is up to your interpretation. Or, I guess, my interpretation, because this is my video. I don't think they're very good. This game kinda sucks, but I'll explain why, don't worry. For starters, for a game that only allows movement to the left and right, Space Raiders handles movement explicitly through the analog stick. Oh, and we're playing the GameCube version, because this game only released in America on the GameCube, the PS2 version was for Japan and Europe only. I don't know if the PS2 release allows usage of the D-pad, but having to waggle the analog stick left and right? Not fun. You might point out that the Space Invaders cabinet used a joystick, and yes, you're right, nerd I made up who knows things about arcade cabinets. It had a two-way stick, which makes sense, because you can only move left and right. A GameCube analog stick has eight directions, two of which let you move, two do nothing, and four move you at a slower pace when there's really no reason for it. Okay, you say, then don't move the stick in those directions. Counterpoint. Let me use the fucking D-pad. This seems like nitpicking. Maybe I'm being too hard on- no. This game barely has content as it is, and it can't even utilize basic aspects of the controller. You have five controls. Space Raiders gives us three characters to choose from, each with their own intricate plotline. Justin, a random teenager angry at the aliens for killing his friends. Ashley, a fashion photographer looking for her fiancé Roy. And Naji, a police officer that's angry that the aliens killed his friends. But he's different from Justin because he's got a shotgun. He also moves a little slower, but hits a little harder, which is the major gameplay difference between these characters. Ashley moves and shoots the fastest because she has two handguns. Naji moves and shoots the slowest, but does the most damage per shot. And Justin's the all-arounder, a real Leonardo. Otherwise, every character controls the same way. The stick moves, A shoots, the shoulder buttons let you dodge roll left and right, X throws a grenade that costs one pip of your super bar, and Y costs two pips to do your character's unique super. Justin starts auto-firing a wide shot that erases projectiles, Ashley does a shockwave attack, and Naji shoots out two energy orbs which absorb enemy fire and retaliate with shots of their own. All your attacks work as advertised, though your dodge roll doesn't seem to have any iframes so much as it puts your hitbox lower than the other projectiles for a second, so some attacks are better dodged by just strafing away. Once you have the controls down, uh, well, you've basically played the game. Space Raiders lives and dies by its gameplay, consisting of only six stages that carry us through your chosen character's story, what little there is to them. Each character goes through the same stages and goes through the same cutscenes, so you may as well figure out which character you like to play and stick with them. The stages themselves follow the same principle, putting you against waves of enemies before fighting a boss to complete the mission, taking us from exciting locales like an alley, not the alley, the sewers, a hangar, the inside of the alien mothership, and the ship's core. Like in Space Invaders, you're provided a fixed shield at the start of the level, though Space Raiders doesn't allow for the tactic of shooting through or even over said shield. You can certainly destroy your own shields though, and doing so will usually yield health or one of the game's power-ups, ranging from rapid fire to piercing shots to speed boosts to invisibility, which is kind of useless. Another power creates a stationary turret of yourself. That's cool, I like that one. That's it though, and now all you have to mix it up from stage to stage are the different enemies you'll be facing. Adorable green bugs, adorable purple bugs, bugs with balls for shoulders, zombies, plants, slimes, frogmen, shield-bearing lizard boys, and this harmless little spaceship that flies through and gives you power up if you shoot it. The enemy designs look good, overall the game is visually fine, but there's not much in the way of cohesion between their forces, like it's some sort of Covenant-style collective of aliens who all hate Earth. I wonder why. After clearing stage 4 at the hangar, your character, regardless of skill level, commandeers a real-ass goddamn fighter jet and flies it into the mothership. Someone's watched Independence Day. It's not me. They did that in Independence Day, right? Fighting our way down an elevator to the ship's center, we confront the main computer overseeing the invasion, and this is where the game really loses me. Beyond the fact that the nature of the game's cutscenes mean that no character ever resolves their storyline, and by that I mean Ashley because she was the only one with a motivation beyond killing aliens, Mission 6 starts with a weird logic reversal that bothers me immensely and is basically the sole reason I felt this was worth making a video about. So, according to the mothership, radio frequencies and electrical signals coming from Earth's atmosphere have been reaching them, invading our space. According to them, 
We are the space invaders, and their invasion of Earth is an act of... self-defense? They don't really explain it. Are the radio signals hurting them? Causing them problems? Are they misunderstanding them as a threat? Pixels wasn't ripping off that episode of Futurama, it was ripping off Space Raiders. And in Space Raiders' defense, nobody fucks Qbert. I hate your voice. Oh shit, did they intercept one of my videos? What follows is a boss rush that culminates in a fight with the core itself, and surely this will put our space invader skills to the test, pushing us to the brink as the difficulty increases to a point of no return. Ah, I'm just fucking with you, this game is easy. The Wikipedia page for this game notes that the changes to enemy behaviors from the original add a more tactical element and prevent the player from standing still and firing. That's only partially true. Sure, enemies don't just strafe right, drop a row, strafe left, drop a row, and sometimes they'll end up walking into your area, in which case you'll need to dodge roll into them, because your dodge roll doesn't have iframes, but it does have damage frames. Either way, you can totally just stand still and shoot at bosses, because Space Raiders gives you unlimited continues. In fact, dying will give you three free pips of super meters, so sometimes the fastest way to handle a boss is to take a laser beam to the melon so you can huck a few grenades as a thank you. But Sammy, your high score! Do you think I care about having a high score on Space Raiders? This game can't even confirm that my fiancé is dead, I just get this scene with Ashley shooting into the sky at a bunch of alien ships. I think we should finish making this game before we go making promises for sequels. Calling Space Raiders shovelware feels off base, but considering that at the time a new GameCube game would usually retail for 50 bucks, yeah, that's highway robbery for how much game you're actually getting. Never spend 50 bucks on a game you can beat in an hour. Obviously that means that if it takes an hour and one minute, then it's fine actually. Criticisms of the game noted poor graphics, repetitive gameplay, and infidelity to space invaders? Wait, people complained it wasn't enough like space invaders? The fact that it sticks so rigidly to the original controls while botching the movement is exactly what I don't like, and don't get me wrong, I like space invaders. I wanted space raiders to metroid prime this bitch to take the premise of space invaders and envision it in another genre. You want to tell a story of invasion day? Make it a twin stick shooter, a first or third person shooter, hell. Go survival horror and make your character be powerless in the face of enemies based on the original space invader sprites, before we knew how to fight back. I feel like you can remake Space Invaders in an engaging way, but this just isn't it. Centipede Infestation does more to stand on its own as a reboot of Centipede by presenting itself as a twin-stick shooter, and I know I'm gonna regret saying that because now I'll feel obligated to do a video about it. Remember kids, call your local governor and demand them to demand me to review it. As for Space Raiders, man, this game sucks. But at least nobody fucked Qbert. Let's see it purple!